So today we ran the CKS, the Mud Skipper Kit. There was um, a few problems that I ran into. It wasn't catastrophic or anything. Um, one problem that I did have is that the prop nut on the end, the brass nut with the lock washer, uh, that fell off. Don't know how, don't know why. I had that tightened on really good. Um, so I don't know what happened there, but I lost the prop nut and the washer. And the prop wiggles a little bit at the very end, so I stopped running it because I didn't have an extra prop nut. Now, another thing I ran into was the handle. The handle was a little bit low, but it wasn't too much of a problem. Uh, the throttle wasn't a problem. It was fairly easy to move with the handle, but the problem was is that the the balance of the two. So you have your tail weight and then you have your engine weight and then you have the gimbal in the middle to, to balance those two out. You need enough weight in the back with the tail to keep the prop in the water. If you have too much then it's too much to handle up at the handle. Now with this kit I didn't have enough tail weight so it was really light and very easy to control at the handle but when you got up to higher speeds, that prop just wanted to keep rising up out of the water and not stay in the wake where it needed to. So it just wasn't balanced correctly. And with this kit, you can't change the balance. And that's a real big drawback of this kit. This is one of the cheapest kits I think you could get. There's no adjusting of this kit. So with that, you need more tail weight. And I believe that's why they sell the 100 inch shaft. They sold the 85 inch shaft then you're really cutting down on some weight and it's going to be really hard to keep that prop in the water so i think that's why they sell the 100 inch shaft is to give you more tail weight to help with that tail weight but it's still not enough tail weight so in short there's not enough tail weight the prop wants to rise up out of the water and shoot out of the wake and that's that's a big drawback I didn't want to pull up on the handle because I know that in the past they've had issues with their transom bracket. They used to have the small little blue ones and they would have problems with that popping off of the transom and hopping into the boat with the operator. To solve it, they would put a lag screw through the top. Now they've upgraded their transom bracket to the one that's here now, but this one is a stamped steel. It's just a piece of metal that was stamped into a U. With that, it's not strong. I tightened this down, the transom bracket, I tightened it down to where I felt comfortable with that transom bracket not coming or moving off of that transom. And from going like this, it is now like this. And another thing that didn't help was the bolts on the back. The bolts, or the nuts. The nuts where you thread that, uh, transom bracket bolt through that has the ears on it to to push up against the transom those nuts were angled down so the whole bracket when it started doing this these were angled even more so that bolt is at a very steep angle to where it looks like that cup is going to break off um, luckily it didn't uh, that did not happen but those bolts are at a very severe angle that just do not look safe um, so that was one reason why I didn't want to pull up on that handle because I didn't want to pull that transom bracket up and out if you had your transom the lag bolt through the top then you may have a little bit more power or more security with it but I didn't feel confident enough to do that so that's why I did not choose to really rag on it and pull that prop into the water to get as much mile per hour as I could. Um, the max speed that I got was 17 miles an hour by myself with two people in the boat. I still got 17 miles an hour. I don't know what it is about this John boat, but any kit that I put on it with any motor, I keep that same mile per hour. So I don't know what's happening there, but that's just my experience with this boat. This boat, just in case you don't know by now, is a 1436 Alumacraft light version. So it's 14 feet long, 36 inch bottom, 
and the problem with the Alumacrafts is that it has a very steep transom. And with these brackets, as you can see in some of the videos, is that they do not work out as well. Um, another problem that I had was with the Zerk fitting on the transom mount. That little pin tool for the gimbal there, um, first I had to beat that in there with a hammer. That was awful. Um, but it does not want to turn in there freely. It's it's uh, with the paint on that shaft or on that pin tool that went into the transom bracket. That was such a tight fit. Um, I had to beat it in there with a hammer and then it just wasn't nice to turn. I thought I'd maybe put some grease in there and the grease didn't help at all. Well, I couldn't really get much grease in there. When I put the gun onto the Zerk fitting, the Zerk fitting wouldn't take any grease. So I just think that it was too tight in there. And if you're gonna use it, or if you have the same problem I did, I'd probably grease it before you put it in there or if you had to hammer it in there. But that was another thing was that Zerk fitting did not fit. Um, another thing is to make this thing that is the cheapest kit is that uh, on your door hinge where that engine um, pivots and where it hinges at and I mean it looks like a door hinge uh, there's two holes but there's no threads there so you can't put a zerk fitting on top to grease that or lubricate it maybe if you had like a oil can or something to where you could drop a few drops of oil in there then that would work but I would the other kits just come with grease and you just grease them. So this is a economy kit, but it is just not worth it. I'd rather pay another $100 for the next kit up, which would be the SPS kit, because this is just so flatline economy, so cheap that I would definitely pay $100 more for the other kit and you get so many more benefits with the SPS kit. So another thing that I had a problem with was when I was riding, before I went to test it, I didn't have any play in the prop. When I did the first test run, I would bring the prop up out of the water and I'd hear a little bit of rattle. So I went back to the dock and I ended up having some play in my shaft. So I had to undo the ears on my shaft to push that shaft up into the uh, coupler housing. Now, these nuts are not the nicest on your hands. You would need a wrench if you want to do it efficiently. It took me forever to play with these by hand. They're just not hand friendly. Um, Beaver Dam, I believe, had some good ones that weren't um, as bad on your hands. I know SPS has ones that are good on your hands. So overall, this kit wasn't bad. It rode. Um, but going over idle speed or just above idle speed, as soon as you broke that 10 miles an hour where you started to throw a good wake, um, it just didn't handle nice because it didn't have enough tail weight. I believe the shaft was long enough. It got out to the wake to where it needed to. It's just that it wasn't, the prop kept shooting out of the water and I couldn't keep it in that wake. But for the test ride, for the water ride, it performed okay compared to the Beaver Dam Mud Motor Kit. The only problem that I had with this kit is the same with the Beaver Dam. That prop just kept shooting out of the water. I adjusted it as best as I could. I bent the skeg. I moved it on the transom to try to center it more. That still didn't work. It just we couldn't get it to ride it right. So we'll get the SPS out and see if that'll ride a little better. Um, if none of them ride right, then it must be my John boat, but it's just a regular Alumacraft 1436. So we'll try the SPS next and see how it goes.